Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be sharing with you the unwritten rules of Amtrak. Amtrak has a lot of rules that are written, but also a lot of rules that are unwritten mm -hmm. that you may not be aware about if you've never ridden on the train. <laughs> so we're gonna break those down for you and just kind of go over what common practices mm -hmm. are, common courtesies when you're riding the train, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, the first one is that, not when you're on the train at all, but it's after your ride, is that mm -hmm. if you had a problem with your ride, big or small, you can get a voucher from Amtrak for a future ride. Yes. So um, it's well known that <laughs> uh, there is a timing issue with uh, you know a lot of the Amtrak train rides, especially the cross country routes yes. that are um, uh, sharing the the rails with the freight trains as well. So there are some tardiness issues, and a lot of times people don't uh, don't know that if you just call them they will issue you a voucher that you can use on a future um, train ride, which is great. Yep. And so depending on how bad the delay was or how bad the problem was, mm -hmm. we've gotten vouchers for uh, one time the air conditioning did not work at all mm -hmm. in the sleeper cars for, the, for <laughs> one whole day. Mm -hmm. And so they gave us a voucher for that. They actually told us, uh, the room attendants, to call in, gave us mm -hmm. the number to call in. Uh, and if you're tardy like six to 12 hours something like that they'll do pretty well with you for that mm -hmm. too I, I think we usually have gotten about half of our fare back mm -hmm. is that yep. right about oh yep yeah, that's about right sometimes we've only gotten like a hundred dollars depending on what it was but yeah you can get a lot of money back in the form of a voucher for a future ride and that's unwritten for good reason they don't write it on the website <laughs> hey call in get all this money back but you need to know that that is an unwritten rule uh second one is the temperature in the sleeper mm. cars is kind of a big deal when you're in there. Uh, it is. Because while every room has a little temperature dial, mm -hmm. those don't really do much of anything. <laughs> yeah. The, the temperature in your sleeper car is controlled by the attendant mm -hmm. who is setting the master temperature for the entire car. Mm -hmm. So what happens is if one person is cold uh, in the car and they start complaining a lot, the attendant will usually go change it. Well, that changes the temperature for 20 people who were not cold. Uh, so kind of the unwritten rule here is mm -hmm. if you know your temperature preference is outside the norm mm -hmm. of everyone else in the car, mm -hmm. either bring a bank blanket or some cooler clothing because when you go to complain, you're affecting everyone. Exactly. And that's one of the reasons why if you've seen our videos before, you know I always travel with that wrap, that scarf, because I tend to be colder than the average person. Um, most people, yeah. you know, are usually warm while I'm cold, wrapped up with a blanket or my cardigan. So I always bring those with me because I know I'm going to be cold and, cold and I don't want, you know, them to have to change the temperature in the whole train car just for me, then everybody else is gonna be burning up. Yep. <laughs> uh, another one is that you can recline your seat in coach class. This, mm -hmm. is, this is a big issue yes. <laughs> on airplanes. Yes, it's pretty controversial issue <laughs> on airplanes, yeah. which we won't get into what we think about that, but... Not so much on Amtrak, <laughs> because yes. there is so much room between the seats and coach mm -hmm. on Amtrak. When you recline, it does go back quite a ways, mm -hmm. but you will not be bothering the person behind you I mean, just look back there and see if it's Shaquille O'Neal. Maybe. <laughs> Even then, I don't think it'd bother him. Uh, so, You're probably the only person it would bother. So check that. But you can recline. In fact, the, the problem that most people have, I know Allie has this problem, is that <laughs> when you go to use the tray in front of you, the seat in front of you is so far up there, you almost can't reach the mm -hmm. tray. That is so a big problem for me. When the person <laughs> reclines, it actually brings the tray... <laughs> close enough yes. that you can actually maybe use it <laughs> yes. so reclining not that big a deal mm -hmm. yeah in fact we've actually had our luggage our, our, big, our big suitcases yeah, mm -hmm. in front of us between us and the seat in front of us yes that's how much room there is yes. so reclining not an issue yeah 
yeah so enjoy that especially if you're you know doing an overnight or a fairly long train ride and you want to take a nap and be fresh from where you get there then definitely recline it and enjoy it and move on <laughs> yeah don't be mad if someone reclines yes. you, you know you have a lot of room <laughs> yes <laughs> it's not that bad <laughs> uh sitting alone in the dining car is mm -hmm. kind of a big deal because a lot of people for whatever reason want to sit alone in the dining car mm -hmm. and generally more and more now they're not letting you do that but there is mm -hmm. a way to do it kind of an unwritten rule is <laughs> if you go at the end or you go at the very beginning and you ask to sit alone, <clears throat> they'll probably do it. Mm -hmm. If you go at 6.15, mm -hmm. not going to happen. Or right when everybody's eating. I mean, the thing is that you can ask them, like, what is the busiest time? Because as they're going through the cars, um, doing the reservations, they'll know, you know, oh, 6.15 is going to be the busiest. That, you know, almost everybody wants to eat at that time. Okay, well, what's your least busiest? And then just, you know, adjust to that if you want to eat on your own. Don't try to get a table by yourself, um, you know, if the dining car is full and they're trying to accommodate everybody. Yeah. Uh, another one that's interesting and mostly pertains, I think, to sleeper cars is mm -hmm. after hours and early morning mm -hmm. noise problems. And the coach <laughs> cars, it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, there's... 50 people in a coach if you're <laughs> yelling at midnight that's pretty obvious mm -hmm. don't do that what happens in the sleeper car is everyone's asleep with their doors closed and people walk down the hallway thinking nobody can hear mm -hmm. those doors are not that we can thick. hear you <laughs> everybody can hear we can hear you everybody getting hear, on and off the train hear everything so uh <laughs> i think it's just important to note whether you're mm -hmm. a late person like me Mm -hmm. or you're an early morning person like her mm -hmm. if you're out in that hallway uh and you're talking loudly like at a normal mm -hmm. voice everyone that's sleeping will probably be able mm -hmm. to hear you so yeah i think it's it i have found that oftentimes it's a big problem in the morning yeah when people are getting up and trying to head to breakfast and such um, they assume, well, it's, you know, the sun is out, so everybody's up. So I'm just going to use my regular voice in the hallway or just yell, <laughs> um, <laughs> which sometimes, you know, you want to use your regular voice, but you end up talking a little bit louder because you're trying to talk over the noise of the train as well. So, you yeah, know, it comes out, true. it comes out pretty loud. Especially when, you know, those doors don't go all the way to the bottom. There's a little bit of, you know, of a hole there. And like Rob said, they're not soundproof. Yeah. So, yeah, not. so we can hear you in the hallway and you're waking people up. Just, you know, be, be conscious of the fact that there are people who might be sleeping in and you know, maybe you shouldn't be yelling in the hallway. Of course we have, we have a way around <laughs> that because Allie sleeps with mm -hmm. Bose Sleep Buds. <laughs> uh, we have a link to those on our website. Yes. Uh, if you get those Sleep Buds too, don't get the originals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, best. use the link that's on, on yeah. our website. Uh, it'll, it'll take you to the ones I use. They're literally the best. Yeah. I can hear nothing. As a matter of fact, if there's a problem, that's going to be a problem because I won't hear it. I'll get Rob you up. has to wake me up when there's yeah. there's an issue, which there isn't ever. But um, you know, those are really helpful. So if uh, if you're a light sleeper even, and people are not making a lot of noise, that's something you know to kind of keep in mind is to bring some earplugs or yeah. yeah. And I'm not a light sleeper, so I just sleep through it. So <laughs> we don't usually have a problem, but no. it is a problem for a lot we of people. We have heard people complain yeah. about it. Uh, next unwritten rule is, this is something they certainly don't write about, is <laughs> that your train will probably be late. Mm -hmm. Just assume that. Mm -hmm. It will be late. Just think to yourself, when you're booking your ticket, okay, it's a 42-hour ride. Just say to yourself, it's a 48-hour ride. Mm -hmm. then you'll be happy when you get there on time <laughs> because it's going to be four to six hours late if you're going across yes. the country mm -hmm. almost without question these days mm -hmm. uh, so don't book yes. anything mm -hmm. important on that same day another you know flight car run or right. whatever you're going to be late right because although technically the passenger trains have the right of way there are a lot of freight trains making their way across and uh, you know, sometimes they get onto those tracks first, and what are you going to do? Um, so they do yeah. have to, you know, kind of concede the, the right of way to, to those freight trains. Yeah, the other reason is that, especially if you're traveling in the summer, 
Mm -hmm. There are heat restrictions. When the temperature gets mm -hmm. above a certain level, the train can only go so fast. Right. Which is slower than how fast it's supposed yes. to go to get there on time. So mm -hmm. there's literally no way they can make it on time. Right. In the summer. Um, so just know <laughs> that and you'll be happier knowing that you're going to be mm -hmm. basically on time in your head instead mm -hmm. of uh, stressing about it. <laughs> uh, another one uh, is, this is this is kind of a funny one, but it's an unwritten rule of using the trash bins uh, in the bathroom properly. So oh my goodness. The Amtrak <laughs> bathrooms maybe have the worst design mm -hmm. in history for mm -hmm. the trash bins. So there's like a trash bin, and then there's a, a lid on it, and there's a button you push, and then the thing goes down, and you throw your trash in. Well, it doesn't always work <laughs> properly, and people don't want to push it down and touch it like hold it in and then put their trash so it goes all the way down so what they do is they take their paper towel and they use the paper towel to push it down and then they let it go and then the thing snaps and it up go down. and it gets caught <laughs> so then the next person says well it's full that's the same thing. and they just start setting it on top and eventually after about three people it's just you can't use the trash it's off anymore. a horrible chain of events and you end yeah. up with a big giant poof ball of paper towels until one of the attendants comes by and notices the mess fixes and then yeah. shoves it all back in and fixes it. And this happens in both, um, you know, the coach bathrooms yeah, as well as does. the sleeper car bathrooms. We've had it in both. So, um, you know, just take a moment, put it in there. There's usually sanitizing gel all over the place these days. Wash, wipe your hands off afterwards. No big deal. Or, do, or just be like, real quick. I've done it real quickly. You can get it in. <laughs> just, just boom. Just, <laughs> so just think about that. But, you know, there's probably not anything you can do about it because it's probably already going to be like that when you get there. Uh -huh. When you get there and you see it, you'll think of this video. You will. You'll <laughs> say, the, oh, this yeah. is it. If you're the first person, if you're the first person, then do it properly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start it. <laughs> okay, unwritten rule of tipping. We get this question mm, a lot. Yes. And kind of the unwritten rule is... For the dining car attendants, two to three dollars per person per meal. Maybe with traditional dining, a little bit higher, mm -hmm. depending on kind of like you're tipping how much the meal would cost at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what people do. And then for the sleeper car attendant, it's usually five to ten dollars per person per night. That's unwritten, which means you don't have to do it. Exactly. You you could do zero. You could do fifty. You can do a hundred. You can do whatever you want. You can do, yeah, whatever you <laughs> because want. Because there is no rule. Most people want to know what's normal, though. Mm -hmm. So that is what's That's normal. That's the average normal. Yes. Okay. Coach class. There are two <laughs> chargers. Mm -hmm. Two for the, yeah, electrical outlets. Yeah, for the seats. For those two seats, two outlets. Both outlets, though, are next to the wall. Mm. So that the two outlets are not for the person sitting by the wall. <laughs> it's one for each. <laughs> and if you're sitting by the wall, the person on the aisle may have to string something over you. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to let them do that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, their phone's going to yeah. die. So there's, I, I mean, there's a couple things you can do, like, you know, wrap the cord around the little flip switch for the, the tray across if the cord is long enough and things like that. Um, it's also why we tell people to bring their own portable charger mm -hmm. just in case, like, if you don't want to. Uh, I mean, it's there for you if you're sitting in the aisle, but if you don't want to, you know, you don't know the person next to you and you don't want to ask them or, you know, you're uncomfortable doing that, you ha if you have your portable charger, you don't have to worry about that. Um, the other thing is you could always go to, if there's a cafe or an or a, um, observation car, sightseer lounge on your train, you could charge your stuff there as well. Yeah. Smoking on the fresh air break uh -huh. is totally allowed. I mean, mm -hmm. some people actually just call it they smoke, call them break. smoke breaks. Smoke breaks. <laughs> yeah. Some some conductors call it the fresh air break. Mm -hmm. I guess it depends. But <laughs> basically, at the fresh air breaks, which are 10 to 15 minute breaks, a lot of people will get off to smoke because mm -hmm. you can't smoke anywhere on the train. Mm -hmm. So that's understandable. But kind of the unwritten rule is don't get off and smoke like... And light up. Two feet <laughs> next to the door yeah. because it will... Come Go in right back the train, into the train, and then you, they they can't get get out of mm -hmm. get it out. And people that are coming off, it not only creates a hazard for people trying to get off the train. Mm -hmm. People that don't want to smell it have to walk through it. Mm -hmm. uh, so just 
you know, mm-hmm. kind of the unwritten rule, run, unwritten rule is get off the train, walk 20 mm-hmm. feet away, mm-hmm. smoke. Yeah, and you'll hear some conductors will even suggest that of like, mm-hmm. hey, take at least 15 steps away from the train before you light up. And actually, some platforms have very strict rules because of fire hazards some stations will have very strict rules on their platforms as to where you can smoke um and it's important to keep those things in mind because then that affects all of the other smokers if if enough people you know break those rules and cause problems they won't let you smoke there are some platforms you're not allowed to smoke at all so uh, keep that in mind to be mindful of others if you're smoking and getting off and using the fresh air brakes as a smoking brake that's great and it's you know nice that you have that opportunity because sometimes there are really long rides to you know hold that in but be mindful of others uh, another one for coach class is changing seats in mm. the middle of the night ah not huh. not a good idea no uh, because if you fall asleep which you are likely to do mm-hmm. they won't know which stop you're supposed to get off at mm-hmm. so in coach they'll put a little ticket above your seat and they'll write down the station and they'll go through and figure out who needs to get off where and if you have changed seats then you won't be alerted <laughs> they, then, they then, won't then, know you're getting off and you're on your own so you wake uh, up in albuquerque <laughs> yeah so unless it's uh the daytime and that's not where you're going in the daytime you could change seats mm-hmm. but now the other thing is with coach if you're, some coach trains have reserved seating, mm-hmm. most do not. Mm-hmm. But if you're on a train with reserved seating, you do need to sit in that seat because it will cause mass mm-hmm. chaos. I've seen oh one goodness. person get on and sit in the wrong seat. Oh my goodness! And then the next person gets on and they see someone in their seat, so they just like, oh whatever, I'll just sit in this seat. <laughs> and then the next station, thirty people get on and no one has the right seat. It's Everyone's just going mayhem. wild, and the conductor is like. I losing their mind. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen them get on and be like, all right, right now, everyone get up, get to your right seat. They're like, move to your correct seat. Because, it's the whole thing. Yeah. It's really a nuisance. So it's best to either, if you have the assigned seat, sit in the one you're assigned, or if you're in a seat, just stay in that one. If you want to make any changes, you need to speak to a staff person first and make sure that it's okay because they also are aware of things that are coming up like, if there's a, a group getting on at one station and they need a particular <laughs> set of seats, or if there's a family and they're trying to keep them close together, and you know things like that, so yeah. just make sure you let somebody know. Don't just move and not tell anyone. One time we got on the tra- <laughs> we were on the train. It was pretty empty, mm-hmm. and people were just sitting where they wanted. Uh-huh. And he came over the announcement. He said, "All right, at the next stop, an elementary school is doing a field trip. There's going to be like." 200 third graders getting on the train <laughs> so we were like oh boy kids were getting off. so everybody get to your seat so that was kind of funny that was very funny uh, another one is not bothering the car attendant mm. after hours oh my goodness. unless it's emergency because if you think about it these people that are the car attendants and the sleeper cars they have to be up at like 5 a.m mm-hmm. to make the coffee for the early risers, mm-hmm. they also have to put the beds down for people late, 9, 10, mm-hmm. 11 o'clock. And if someone's getting on a sleeper car at like 2 a.m., which does happen, mm-hmm. they have to be up to get them on. So mm-hmm. after, you know, 10 o'clock, before 5 o'clock, they have to sleep. So if you're just like need water or ice or something, <laughs> that's probably not a good reason to <laughs> ring the attendant bell. Yeah. Not only that, when you ring it, It'll wake everybody up in the mm-hmm. hole. Because train. everyone can hear Everyone it. can hear the attendant mm-hmm. call button uh, for some reason. I don't know why. And if the attendant is sleeping and they don't really hear it, it doesn't wake them up. Until they wake up, everyone will hear it. So everyone will definitely mm-hmm. be awake. So uh, I guess the rule of thumb there is, unless it's an emergency, mm-hmm. don't use the attendant call button mm-hmm. after hours. It's probably better just to, you know where the room is. It's mm-hmm. room number one. Walk down there and knock on the door. And they usually tell you uh, when you first get on the train and they introduce themselves, they'll tell you, I'm in room. It's usually room number one, but if it's not, they will tell you what room that is. But generally, it is room number one. Yep. Uh, Luggage. So there are luggage Mm -hmm. racks on most trains in the bottom level. They're generally big enough for everything. Mm -hmm. But if you have a group of like six people, 
and you each bring two bags, mm. you're going to take up the whole rack. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess the unwritten rule there is if you have tons and tons of bags, just check the bags mm -hmm. because you don't want to... We've seen situations where there mm -hmm. was so much luggage that one time I was like trying to come down the stairs from the top and people had set luggage on the stairs and I was like, oh, <laughs> what would make you think this is a good place to put it? There so was they, nowhere to put it. So they ended up putting it like just in the little vestibule mm -hmm. and I think they put one in the shower because <laughs> so, nobody was using the shower. Uh, but yeah, if you bring tons and tons of luggage, it could be an mm -hmm. issue. So just check mm -hmm. that down. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and then another one is for the observation car. Mm -hmm. There generally is no rule as to how long you can sit in there, but this is just being a good fellow traveler. If you see that people keep walking through looking for seats and you've mm -hmm. been in there for two, three hours, you know, maybe get up and go yeah. back and, and let some other people have a chance. Yeah. Uh, they don't generally police that except for on the California Zephyr. Mm -hmm. They will. They That's will, the only one. Yeah. They'll kick you out yeah. on the Zephyr. And let other people in. Yeah, if you go in there too early and try to reserve a spot, you will hear the conductor come over and say, whoever is in there right now can stay there for another however long or till we get to such and such, you know, uh, stop. And then they clear out the room and let a new group of people come in. So um, just keep that in mind if you're trying to get, if you're trying to use the observation car. Uh, if you don't need to, especially on, on the California Zephyr, if you don't need to, like if you have a window seat on the side where you can see everything, then don't give up your seat. Just keep your seat. Or if, you know, you have a sleeper car with a view of everything, why leave your sleeper car room for, you know, for the observation car? I know you can see more, but this way, this gives more people an opportunity, especially those that are not on the correct side of the train and can see, mm -hmm. you know. Well, we hope this has been helpful <laughs> for you and you kind of learned a few things that maybe aren't written, maybe mm -hmm. kind of just under the, under the, uh, <laughs> under the radar, <laughs> under the radar. <laughs> and uh, hopefully it'll make you enjoy your trip a little bit better. We thank you for watching. Uh, give us a like, leave us a comment if you've seen any of these things or had these happen to you, what mm -hmm. you think, or if you think of a different one. Mm -hmm. different yes, we could add it to the next one. Add it to the <laughs> comments and we'll let people see them there. So uh, thanks a lot and we will see you on the next video.